Today we're going to take a look at somebody who is not on TRT, but rather a very high dose of testosterone. We're going to take a deep dive into their blood work. But as always, this is not medical advice. This should not be used to treat or diagnose medical conditions. This is for educational and entertainment purposes only. So this individual is on 400 milligrams of testosterone per week. That is almost never a TRT dose. So generally speaking, everybody's different, but TRT is 100 milligrams per week that some very, very big people could be up to 300 milligrams per week. I know that sounds crazy, but I can tell you that there are some individuals that are 400 plus pounds that if you put them on the 200 milligrams, which is standard, a lot of places will do that, their testosterone will only go up to like say 400. But that's not here nor there. Today we're gonna to take a deep dive in this blood work. We're gonna look at his testosterone levels, obviously, lipids, CBC, we're gonna look at DHEA and pregnenolone. There's a lot of interesting stuff in here. So if you're somebody that, let's say, you're not doing TRT, but rather you are blasting and cruising, this 400 milligrams is a cruise dose for him, then this might be informative for you. But the first thing we're gonna look at is the most interesting part, the coolest part of this, which is probably what you wanna see, and that's his actual hormonal profile in terms of testosterone and estradiol. So let's start with the testosterone. So this is an LCMS testosterone test. This is what we consider the gold standard. So I did call up this lab and it's an LCMS MS, so liquid chromatography tandem mass spectrometry. If you don't know what that is, well, I'll link a video at the end where I basically explain why this is better than what's considered immunoassay. So an immunoassay test generally will only go up to 1500 nanograms per deciliter. This goes much, much higher than that. So we're looking at the testosterone total MS. We can see his total testosterone, and this is at 400 milligrams per week, is 3,867. So that is about three and a half times higher than the top of the reference range. But again, this isn't a guy that is doing TRT through a clinic. This is somebody that's doing his own thing. So almost 4,000 nanograms per deciliter is pretty damn high. Looking at free testosterone, 1,496.8, that's about almost seven times higher than the top end of the reference range, and bioavailable testosterone, 2,948.1, that's about six times higher than the top of the reference range. So that's to be expected when you are doing a very high amount of testosterone, you should see, if the testosterone is real, very high serum levels of testosterone. Another thing we're gonna look at is estradiol. So the estradiol is also out of range, it's 96, that's considered high, that's about double the reference range. The reason that this person may not be having side effects in terms of estrogen is because sometimes, everybody's different, but sometimes it's the ratio of androgens to estrogens. It's the ratio of testosterone to estradiol that kind of impact the side effects. So this individual is not dealing with any type of gynecomastia, he's not dealing with any estrogenic symptoms. This is just to be expected when you're taking a lot of testosterone, you're probably gonna see a lot of estradiol. So nothing here should be kind of out of the normal or, or rather extraordinary or something you wouldn't expect. Um, but we're, let's get into the lipids and then we're gonna look at some other hormones as well. So inflammation marker is very, very low. It's less than 0.2, you can see the actual reference range. That looks very good. Looking at his lipids though, total cholesterol 191, that's under 200, that's considered optimal. HDL cholesterol is 41. Okay, that is in the optimal range, but it is just barely there. Generally speaking, when you're taking androgens, high levels of androgens, you will start to see a suppression of HDL. Me personally, when I was doing oxandrolone, which is an androgen, I saw my HDL get cut in half. Even on TRT, I saw a slight drop in my HDL. So the fact that this guy is on so much testosterone and his HDL is still within range is good, but it would be even better if it was higher than 41. Triglyceride 77, that looks great, in my opinion. Um, he probably has a very good diet. 
LDL cholesterol at 133 outside of the reference range. Sometimes we see that with guys on TRT. Sometimes we'll also see that on somebody that's not on TRT, but they just have, let's say, more of a ketogenic diet. They don't have a lot of fiber. They're eating a lot of animal product and a lot of animal fat. Sometimes that will cause higher LDL. What's causing his? It's probably a combination of, the, of both of them. It's probably a meat-based diet, a bodybuilding diet, um, and excessive androgen use. The actual ratios are in the moderate range, but I think that wouldn't be so bad if his HDL was, was higher. Metabolic panel, glucose looks good, it's at 90. Hemoglobin A1C, which is basically the average glucose over I think it's three months, 5.3, that looks good. Estimated average glucose at 105. Vitamin D is at 31.9. So technically that is in the above the optimal range, but in reality, everything that I've read basically shows that vitamin D between 50 and 70 is better in terms of your immune response. Getting into the CMP, comprehensive metabolic panel. This actually looks pretty good. So the sodium is just outside of range. There's a lot of things that can cause that. But other than that, nothing really unremarkable. Blood urea nitrogen is at 13, creatinine 1.26, which is almost outside of the reference range, but technically still in it. Um, I don't know why I accidentally redacted this, but his EGFR is 76. That is not the top tier test to assess kidney health, but it is included in a CMP, so I just wanted to bring that up. 76, it should be greater than or equal to 60. This is something that's unique. So for people that have been on exogenous androgens for a very long time, there's a couple of hormones that most people don't check, but sometimes what, what we notice is that guys who have been on exogenous testosterone, let's say for, I don't know, 20 plus years, we start to see DHEA sulfate and we start to see pregnenolone either below the reference range or lower. But his DHEA is almost right in the middle, so that actually looks pretty good. Going back to the hormones where we saw the testosterone and estradiol, just to revisit this, his pregnenolone is at 29, so almost too low. This is something that, again, it's a pattern we see on guys that have been on exogenous androgens or, or steroids for a very long time. He may benefit from some pregnenolone. We notice that guys that have low pregnenolone will deal with, it's, it's kind of weird, um, it's tough for them to really relax. Uh, sometimes, some people have reported social anxiety, oddly enough, but when we bump that up with compounded pharmaceutical grade pregnenolone, we can get that. More is not always better, but sometimes right in the middle of the reference range, they start to feel great. Um, if you go above the reference range, that has some problems too, but I'm not surprised to see lower pregnenolone. TSH looks good. PSA, prostate specific antigen, is also not bad, 0.47. So a lot of things can elevate that. Sometimes hard steroid abuse, it's speculated that that could elevate that. Looking at the hematology, this is interesting because more often than not, guys that are doing very high dose testosterone, we start to see some erythrocytosis. We'll see some hemoglobin, hematocrit out of range, red blood cells out of range. This guy, Literally no issues. Red blood cells look good, hemoglobin looks good, hematocrit looks good, surprising for me, very surprising. Uh, but everybody's different. Some people have a more robust response to these drugs, other people, you know, you gotta manage them a little more closely. But I just wanted to go over this stuff, uh, not because I think you should do 400 milligrams of testosterone per week, but to just give you an idea of what can happen in the serum when you're taking high doses of androgen. So there are things to look out for. Obviously look at your lipids, look at your actual hormonal profile. Maybe you don't need that much testosterone. Do your CBC, do your CMP. Those are just some basic tests. And then if you've been on them for a very long time, DHEA sulfate and pregnenolone are also something to look at. So look, if you learned anything in this video, do me a favor, like the video. If you're interested in content like this, don't forget to subscribe. If you wanna go legit, let's say you're somebody that's doing the street drugs and you're ready to go legit, go on my website, Steel Health and Hormone Center, center spelled re.com. Fill out a contact form. We will be in touch within 24 hours. Again, guys, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and thanks for watching.